Matt Rajansky is director of the Wilson Center's Kennan Institute, which happens to be the oldest program here at the center. Not the oldest director, but you run the oldest program. Matt, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tom. When, when we talk about uh, Russia and v Vladimir Putin today, and you hear the rhetoric emanating, particularly from Capitol Hill, sounds yeah. like we're back in the Cold War. Yeah, in a lot of ways, and it's not only here in Washington. Uh, I think the rhetoric coming from the Russian side, uh, driven by a perception among many Russians, I don't think they're wrong, uh, that they're returning to an era in which there's going to be tight state control on everything they do and say and where resources are spent, uh, what kinds of uh, institutional prerogatives the Academy of Sciences and the other research institutions in the country have. Uh, there's, a, there's a rollback going on across the board. It's not ideological. It's not about communism. Uh, it's not a Cold War. Uh, but there's a sense of a reassertion of state control. And I think it is being met from the American side uh, by almost a kind of surreal relief on the part of some old Cold Warriors that, you know, the old familiar enemy is back. Bad guys back in business. It makes life a little easier, actually. Yeah, well, I, mean, I guess it was Newt Gingrich who has famously talked about how conservatism thrives when it has an enemy. Right. Uh, uh, what about uh, Vladimir Putin from getting inside his head, how he sees himself in that he's been characterized by many around the world during this period as a lot of different things, usually not complementary. How does he see his own role in this? I'm, he certainly doesn't see himself as a villain. Yeah, I think uh, I think few people in human history, even if they're remembered as villains, see themselves as villains. Um, I, I I would have trouble really challenge, channeling Putin's thinking at this point. I think he's gone pretty far off the reservation in terms of what we in the expert community thought we understood about him. Um, but if you listen to what he says, and I tend to find that to be a pretty good indicator of where his mind is. Um, there's been a dramatic change from the early 2000s when he had just ascended to the presidency of Russia. He was largely confronting domestic problems in Russia, security, um, you know, backwardness, corruption, uh, crime, um, and, and poverty, of course, post-Soviet chaos and collapse. I think his position vis-a-vis -vis the international issues that have now become front and center was uh, if Russia gets its own house in order, then it will be taken seriously. Uh, if you fast forward a little bit to the latter part of the last decade, think of his speech in Munich in 2007, uh, think of Medvedev's speeches when he ascended to the presidency in 2008, clearly on Putin's behalf. Mm -hmm. There was a message that said, look, uh, we need to fix the international system because here we are, Russia, we have resurged, we have arrived, uh, we are back as a great power, and yet uh, we have no ability to uh, deter the United States from doing these reckless things around the world, regime change, you know, willy-nilly, uh, disrespecting the rules of international law. Uh, so we've got to fix the system. And the Russians, in fact, proposed this new European security treaty, uh, which was rejected more or less out of hand by the West. Um, and now fast forward to today, right, another five, six years down the road, and I think Putin has basically said, look, we're back, we're strong, we deserve a place at the big boys table, but you won't respect that. And more than that, you won't respect the basic rules internationally anyway. So now we're just going to advance our interests. We're going to do whatever we want, irrespective of the rules. So whereas in 2007, Putin is saying the only legitimate use of force is under a UN Security Council resolution, now he doesn't even go to the Security Council for Crimea because he acknowledges the rules don't matter. You didn't say this explicitly, but one way to interpret what you just said is that in many ways the United States is Dr. Frankenstein in this scenario. And our behavior over the past uh, decade or so has encouraged this type of behavior. We've set the rules, which is make up your own rules. It would be an overstatement to say that we created Putin's Russia or we created our own monster here. Uh, but there's no question that we missed opportunities to engage the Russians in a way that would have brought them closer into the liberal international so consensus. So we, we were bad winners of the Cold War? Uh, that's probably a fair characterization. The, the Russian perception is definitely that uh, the United States was indifferent, that we did a victory lap while Russians were suffering in the 1990s, and then that the unipolar moment, as many people described it, uh, which is probably over, uh, but certainly existed for a while, was, was used and abused to such a point that the damage really couldn't be undone. And, and what we are now reaping is a less, is, is the, the, the fruit of a less uh, predictable, less stable international order that we've had a hand in creating. I think that would be the argument.
We're going to uh, break now. Our time is up, but I'd like you to come back for a part two of this discussion, and we'll look a little more into uh, diplomacy and what it can achieve and, and sanctions and all the other things that have been taking place. Happy to. Okay, look forward to it.